Welcome to the Prophecy Club. Our topic today is emergency this weekend. Now, I'm not saying that. That's what the information I'm about to bring you is saying. If you put it all together, that's exactly what it's saying. Now, let me just say, uh, Ezekiel 33, 6 says, If the watchman sees a sword coming, he is to blow the trumpet. And if he doesn't blow the trumpet, then the blood of those people that were not warned is on his head. No place in there does it say for the watchman that he has to guarantee that the sword comes. It's just that if he sees the sword coming, he's to blow the trumpet. I see a sword coming based upon the information I'm about. I see an or a sword coming, so I'm doing my job by warning you. Now, is it going to happen? I can't guarantee that. I'm not God. But I can guarantee you from the information, if it's accurate, and it comes from two credible sources, that the, apparently the emergency we've been talking about arrives this week. And I hope you are ready. Okay, here we go. Headline, U.S. government planning for total cellular outage. I've got another article on this, too. U.S. senators were all just given satellite phones in case something happens where they cannot use their cell phones. We've been talking about this, a blackout that comes out, and my guess is, this is just a guess, based upon all the information that we've all run across and researched, apparently they're about to do the switcheroo. Apparently, this is my guess, they're about to bring in the CBDC, the digital currency. And it may be, I can't rule out the possibility, that the internal revolution is about to happen, and we're about to see massive arrests, massive arrests. I hope that's what happens. And it could be that in that process, they shut down the cellular network and they take over all of the communications and start playing that 24-hour loop. Actually, it's an eight-hour loop. They play it three times a day, 24 hours a day for like 10 days. I do not know. I'd like to know. I do not know that that's exactly what's happening. However, well, let me go on. There, there's some credible reasons to say that. Or perhaps it's a case where government already knows that they're going to be taken down cellular. High-level U.S. politicians will be vacationing. Vacationing? In other words, they're going off to be protected. Will be vacationing a Memorial Day weekend with their families at various undisclosed continuity of government locations. That's where they go when they're expecting a nuclear attack. I don't think the nuclear attack is coming. I think that it's something else. It may be that the bad guys are running from the good guys. I, again, I just don't know. But I know that apparently something's up. Friends of family members are saying their friends and their relatives are bragging about some super secret vacation in some kind of government bunker facilities. And people are supposed to be at the de destinations no later than May 27th, 2023. That's this weekend. I'm not saying that. That's a, this sort, and I'm about to show you another source says. Something so unnerving that they want all people, assets, and dependents to be at their locations by Saturday. Now, this is CBS News. This is part of the conspiracy. Senators issued satellite phones, offered demonstrations on upgraded security devices. Amid growing concerns of security risks to members of Congress, more than 50 senators have been issued satellite phones for emergency communication and recommended the senators keep them in close proximity during their travels to ensure a redundant and secure means of communication during a disruptive event. What does that sound like to you? Sounds to me like something bad's happening. And remember, they have a time machine. They have a, a, a looking glass. They can see into the future. They know what's coming. So it may be that they're preparing for what they cannot stop. A security backstop in the case of emergency that, quote, takes out communications in part of America. Federal funding, funding may pay for the satellite airtime needed to utilize the, pay, the, the phone devices. A tool for responding to and coordinating government services in case of a man-made. This is CBS News, okay? A man-made or a natural disaster that wipes out communication. Could it be 
that a lot of these things that we've been talking about coming that have been delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed, could it be this is about to be the trigger? And there's more. BlackRock. Now, <laughs> I can't say enough bad about BlackRock. If I start telling you all the bad stuff about BlackRock, they will take me off. <laughs> These are the bad guys, okay? BlackRock takes big stake in Sprott Silver PSLV ETF, 20.6 million shares. What? What does that mean? Okay. This is one of the three wealthiest organizations in the world. I believe that they are probably part of the people that say, like the World Economic Forum has said, by 2025, no, it's by, yeah, I guess it was 2025. Maybe it's 2030. I'm not sure of the date. You'll be, you, you, you won't own anything, but you'll be happy. Okay, well, <laughs> how are they going to get all over this, this land, the, the cars, the car lots, the, the houses? How can get that all out of our hands? Could it be that BlackRock knows that there's about to be a big switcheroo on the currency? Could it be that they know that coins and paper are about to go away? And so they're putting their money in silver. Now, that PSLV, what that means is physical silver. Okay, they're not investing in silver notes. They're not investing in a silver mine. They're investing in actual owned bars of silver. <laughs> and now, maybe, maybe we should think about doing the same thing. Let me say it again. BlackRock is taking $20.6 million in physical silver. Now, that's kind of a problem for an institution that is just investing. Because if they're just investing, they wouldn't do that because they like to be able to put it in, take it out quick. But in that this is physical silver, it has to be physically moved, physically inventoried. Physically, you got to put it in a secure location, you got to hire security people. So there's a lot to them investing in physical th silver. So when they have bought that much physical silver, are you listening? Are, you know, one person said, do as the wealthy people do. I don't necessarily always agree with that, but in this case, it might fit. The, uh, the, the what is here, the tweet says, BlackRock takes big stake in Sprott Silver. While BlackRock has held its own shares, I'm going to skip on down, doesn't matter if BlackRock holds onto PSLV, the institutional waterfall buying is coming. Now remember, and, and let me just give you a disclaimer. This is not an investment program. This is a Bible prophecy program. And I'm not giving financial advice. What I am doing is telling you back in 2010, when Shane Warren had the vision, and many of the things have already started to come to pass, he was told in an audible voice that silver is going to skyrocket far more than gold. Now, I think gold is going to skyrocket too. I think a lot of things are about to skyrocket because basically the dollar is about to go to worthless. Or at least stepping that direction. So, could it be that this big whatever it is, actually brings the first step to the skyrocket of silver. If BlackRock is putting that kind of money in physical silver, okay, not investment, physical silver, obviously they know something. And here's another article that talks about, and you can see right down here, how much they have bought and how many, <laughs> compared to some of the other people, how much they own. In other words, they bought big time into silver. So if you're thinking about getting silver, I can't give you financial advice, but these people can. They're experts in it. They're Christians. They're prophecy students. They love Prophecy Club. They follow Prophecy Club. And it's corner, cornerstoneassetmetals.com. You don't have to buy. When you call, you don't have to buy. Just call them. Start talking. This is my situation. Here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I got. Here's what I don't want to happen. And then listen. Listen and consider their advice. Okay, let's move on. Red alert from the Daily Reckoning. Now, this guy did not openly say he's a Christian, but indirectly it sure sounds like he's a Christian, sounds like he's a prophecy, so it sounds like he knows what's going on, which is why I'm reading it. 
Investors look at the failure of Silicon Bank, uh, Valley Bank on March 10th as the start of a new banking crisis. Yep, well, actually, it probably wasn't the start, but it's well on its way. But a closer look reveals the crisis may have begun over a year earlier, I think he's correct, November 2021, when Bitcoin started an epic, epic meltdown. The price of Bitcoin fell 77.5%. Now, skip on down. You may say, so what? Well, if you don't any, own any Bitcoin, the problem is, is that financial systems, here it is, are densely connected even if the problems arise in crypto land. In other words, one domino knocks the other domino down. That's what he's saying. Bitcoin collapse led to a series of related crashes. In May 2022, the so-called stablecoin and a related Luna coin lost $40 billion in value. And he goes on to list the other coins that lost a lot. The point is, we've got a couple of dominoes that have fallen. And those other dominoes are knocking over other dominoes. And it doesn't look like the dominoes are going to stop anytime soon. In November 2022 came the biggest crypto meltdown of all. FTX filed for bankruptcy. We all heard about it. And it may be the largest fraud in history. Next headline. Oh, actually, this is the next part of the article. Crypto contagion spreads to mainstream banking system. Finally, the virus, a financial contagion, jumped from crypto world to the world of mainstream banking. The carrier was Silvergate Bank, which announced its insolvency on March 9th. Then Silvergate comes along, member of the FDIC, and is also a crypto bank, and it made loans against cryptocurrencies and offered to buy and sell these cryptocurrencies for dollars. But now... The liquidity virus was infecting the U.S. banking system. And from there, the dominoes continued to fall. Here's a brief chronology of the mainstream banking failures since early March this year. Silvergate, Silicon, Signature, UPS, UBS, excuse me, First Republic. Okay, those are big dominoes. And those big dominoes are knocking over other smaller dominoes. The article continues. The current incoherence of Fed policy. He says regulators took extraordinary and unprecedented actions. He said the Fed is lending more than the securities are worth. This facility could result in a trillion dollars or more of newly printed money to make the loans. This money printing spree comes at a time when the Fed claims to be reducing the money supply as part of its inflation fighting. So, the Fed is tightening and easing at the same time. In other words, the Fed's causing the problem. Janet Yellen has destroyed confidence in the FDIC system by blurring the limits on insurance offered and depleting the insurance fund. Again, heavy-handed intervention has its costs in terms of uncertainty and lost confidence. The system is blinking red. He says there's always warning signs of a crisis, which are mostly ignored. The warning signs today include, listen up, dollar shortage. We're not surprised. High quality collateral shortages to support derivatives, which made worse by the debt ceiling, which prevents new insurance of treasury bills. Inverted treasury yield curves, negative swap spreads, auctioned treasury bills, yielding less than Federal Reserve overnight reserve repo facility and the flight of cash from banks to treasury bills and money market funds. I don't even understand all that, but I bet they don't understand the prophecies either. The watch list of banks waiting to fall includes PacWest, Western Alliance, First Horizon, Comerica, Key Corp. In short, the system is blinking red. Now, we prophecy students, we've been watching for this for 13 years. These guys, unfortunately, are just now in the last few months starting to say, ah, you know, something's wrong. If they just listened to the prophets, they'd have a whole lot more advanced and more accurate information. The bottom line is that we're facing a severe recession. You think? Uh, That's just the minor part. Wait till the Russians attack with nuclear weapons. A financial crisis worse than 2008, de-dollarization, lost confidence in the Fed, and the U.S. dollar political repression through the rise of central bank digital currencies or CBDCs, which may be 
what is about to happen, but something's about to happen, and potentially extreme social unrest. The winners in this scenario are gold, which we've been recommending, silver, yep, land, mm -hmm, energy, agriculture, U.S. Treasury notes. Now, again, if we do what the people on the inside, the leaders do, sometimes when we follow them, it's a good idea. So I looked it up. This is the land that Bill Gates has bought over the last few years. 242,000 acres. Now, do you think that he has become just interested in farming? No. Do you think he wants to see that the prices are held down to the very best prices, the very best quality food for the American people to eat? No. Okay, so then why is he buying all of the land? Well, I personally think he's... <laughs> I've never met him, okay, I've never met him, don't know for sure, but this is based upon what I read out there. Apparently he's a pretty evil guy. My guess is he's buying all that land so that he won't farm it, it won't be farmed, and he can, by his own decision, cut our food supplies down. In other words, to see that we don't eat. So, be a good idea to have some food on hand. Be a good idea to have some gold and silver on hand as we've been talking. As I've been saying, follow the money. Bill Cates and his wife are America's largest private farm land owners. So, if the elite are buying physical silver and land, what do you think that tells us that we might ought to consider? Next headline, the Club of Rome how climate hysteria is being used to create global governance. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about the setup of the world order, the new world order. The United Nations and Associated Global, Globalist Roundtable Groups are hard at work developing a scheme to convince the population to embrace global centralization of power. Their goals were rather direct, and here's what they wanted. It's wanted. Now, it's changed a little bit. A rationale for governmental control of human population. They want to control us. Limit industry. Control energy. Limit food production. Micromanage individuals' lives. Individual right of property is abandoned. They want a one-world economic system. That may be what's about to be set up this coming weekend. One-world currency. That would also be the same thing. One-world government, but they forgot one-world religion. But we know that's coming. One of the most revealing quotes on the agenda comes from Clinton administration Strobe Talbert, who said, In the next century, nations as we know it will be obsolete. I hope you're listening. It's important. All states will recognize a single global authority. It's called the Antichrist. He sits on the throne. Everybody got to worship him. National sovereignty wasn't such a great idea after all. Well, it was if you want to be free. But it was a good idea for them because they don't want us free. They want us worshiping their God. Foreign Affairs Magazine, 1974, entitled The Hard Road to World Order. In short, the House of World Order will have to be built from the bottom up rather than what they've been trying to do from the top down. It will look like a great booming, buzzing confusion. It's called Ordo Ab Chao order, a new world order, out of chaos. What chaos? A chaos they create. I'll back up and read it again. Booming, buzzing, confusion, to use William James' famous description of reality, but an end run around the national sovereignty, eroding it piece by piece, will accomplish much more than the old-fashioned frontal assault. In other words, instead of trying to make a world government through bullet, we do it through confusion through media, through lies and deception. And I'm going to conclude with this. Back in October 2012, we had Daniel Davis. He's a missionary out of, I think it's Costa Rica. He came and spoke to Prophecy Club. He made a very important, very powerful DVD called I Saw the Dollar Dead, which you can watch instantly at watchprophecyclub.com. You can also get the DVD for a gift of $30, but the better deal is 20 bucks a month. You can watch like, what, 300-some-odd DVDs for $20 a month or $200 a year. And I even think they've got a coupon in now for $180 a year now for $6,000 worth of DVDs. Anyway, 
If you want the DVD, it's at prophecyclub.com. If you want to watch it instantly, it's at watchprophecyclub.com. I'd recommend it. You'll, you'll really like it. So in this dream, he says, I saw a man who looked like a government official, appeared on the big screens and began to make an announcement. And he said, Ladies and gentlemen, I have an announcement to make. America, as you have known it, has ceased to exist. All property lines have been dissolved, and the U.S. dollar is worthless. When the people heard this, they began to panic. Scene two of the dream. I was suddenly standing at a gas station, a convenience store. He had a high fence off to the side with barbed wire across the top. Inside the fence were tractors, power equipment, lawnmowers, chainsaws, and all kinds of different items that clearly had been recently traded. I was standing beside the Indian man who clearly was the owner or manager of the convenience store. Frantic people were pulling their vehicles up to the fuel pumps, buying gas. An SUV pulled up with an open trailer in the back. An entire family was in the vehicle, and they all looked worried. They had thrown all of the belongings into the trailer and strapped items on top of the vehicle. The father jumped out of the SUV and came up to the man. He said, I need a gas, a full gas, uh, uh, I need a full tank of gas. He pulled out his billfold, pulled out some U.S. dollars. Store manager said, I don't take U.S. dollars. I hope you're paying attention. Father asked, well, then what do you take? The manager says, what do you have? So the father and manager walked over to the trailer and started looking through it, finding something of value that he could trade for a tank of gas. The store manager clearly was going to choose whatever he wanted in order to allow the frantic man to get some gas. That'd be a very good time to be able to pull out a silver coin, which would still have some value. I'm sure he'd much rather have a silver coin than a saw or a screwdriver, or something like that. My point is, I strongly suggest that you ask Jesus to forgive your sins, come into your heart, to be your God. Then you want to ask him to show you what you need to do to get prepared. And that may be a lot of things. Only he knows. And in my opinion, when it comes to food, the very best plan of all of the emergency food supplies, all of the long-term storage food, this is the best one because most of the other ones will cost you about $10,000 per person per year. That's right, about $10,000. But at Joseph Kitchen, you can do it for about $1,000 per person per year. That's 90% less than the rest of the guys. How are they doing it? Well, here's what you do. You get a machine package. That's all of the mechanical things that you need to make a loaf of bread. You'll get a grinder, which you then put in. And you'll get to the wheat. I'll get to that in a second. So you put the wheat in, push a button. 30 seconds later, you have flour. You put that into the bread machine along with six other ingredients. Push a button. Two hours, 20 minutes later, you're going to have a nice, hot, healthy, wholesome, wonderful tasting loaf. Matter of fact, that's what I had for breakfast this morning, as I do most every morning and lunch. Whole wheat loaf of bread. You cut that into 14 slices. Give one to the children in the morning, one in the afternoon. They're good. It's not everything they need, but it's pretty close to it. Then you have to ask yourself how much food you want. You want food for one person a year, two people a year, four people a year, six people a year. I recommend you get more than what you think you need. Because the neighbors, when they smell the bread, <laughs> when they see you have preparations, when you see you have light, they're going to be knocking on your door with blankets and pillows in hand, and you want to be able to say, come on in. We've got food, we've got warmth or cool, and we've also got the gospel. That's the way we really want it to all happen. I'm Leslie, owner and founder of Joseph's Kitchen, and I want to show you how to make healthy, homemade, whole wheat bread for only a few hundred dollars a year. At Joseph's Kitchen, our ingredients have been packaged for immediate use or long-term storage. Go to josephskitchen.com or call the number on your screen to order today. Don't get caught unprepared. Go to josephskitchen.com now. Terry Saka, CornerstoneAssetMetals.com. The world seems to be falling apart financially. Why should they call CornerstoneAssetMetals.com today? Well, the FDIC insurance fund is now empty. Not only is it empty, it's at zero. So now all bank bailouts are going to have to come from taxpayers. 
This could result in trillions of new currency notes being printed. The more they print, the more inflation we're going to have, potentially hyperinflation, and we need to protect ourselves away from that dollar. CornerstoneAssetMetals.com. Go online or give them a call at 888-747-3309. CornerstoneAssetMetals.com. You don't have to get anything today. Just give them a call and say, hey, here's my situation. What do you suggest? I am having another level two. Level two School of the Watchman's Conference, and I'm calling this a teacher's course. It's going to be September 15 and 16. You can go to prophecyclub.com, and it'll tell you all of the details about it. And it gives you all of the requirements. I'll let you read that online. However, the big question is you're going to be saying, well, what's the difference between level one and level two? Well, lots. Level one was primarily reading through most of the book of Revelation and teaching it. That's not be level two. Yes, we will do some reading. But this one is designed to make you a teacher of Bible prophecy, which, by the way, our office wants to know if you went through level one and if you have taught or have been invited to teach from the book of Revelation and you went through level one, send me an email. I'd like to know that. I know there's been at least one. I think there's two, maybe more. Anyway, I'd like to know. So level two is to teach you to the point to where you can be qualified to actually teach the book of Revelation. Now I can tell you right up front, we're going to have a level three, God willing. And in that one, I'm going to require people to memorize the book of Revelation to come to level three. And so there's going to be one year's difference between level two and level three. It took me a year to memorize it. So I figure it'll take you a year to memorize it. Some of you may even faster. So go to prophecyclub.com and it'll give you all the details, tells you all about some of the difficult questions and things like that we're going to cover in level two. Level two is going to get you real close to being a, a qualified teacher of Revelation. But by the time you get through level three, having memorized the book, pastor's going to listen to you. And that's where we're going with this. Also, I'd recommend you go, you know, go and get yourself a Berkey water filter. And yes, we do have Berkeys all in stock now. Uh, also, we have potassium iodate pills, which are what you take inside of once a radioactive unit has happened in your area. As far as uh, Berkey water filters, this is one thing you want to be sure to do is get some extra filters. This is the minimum most people get is this one right here. I get... The Crown Berkey right here, this is the one I have, this one I use. And I have about eight extra filters with me too because if you're using clean water, they'll last a year or two. But if you're using rainwater or muddy water, then they clog up a whole lot faster. So you want to have some extra filters. Next is, I'll send you to empshield.com. If you use the promo word prophecy, you get a $50 discount. What is that? Well, it looks like this. This is the one that goes into a car, okay? And you put the red wire to the red side of the battery. You put the black wire to the black side of the battery. And the green one attaches to the body of the car. Then you peel it off right back here. Just peel that off. Stick it inside of the, 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 the engine compartment of your car. And the whole point is when the electricity goes off or when some kind of a suitcase nuclear, nuclear device goes off, this is supposed to be able to stop that device from destroying every computer chip in your car. Because if every computer chip is destroyed in your car these days, you couldn't possibly replace them all. Throw the car away. So, empshield.com, promo code PROPHECY. <laughs>